All right, I'm looking for a new barbell. Oh, and companion. Oh, well, this is Stacy. She's colorful and will always brighten your day. That's not really my style. All right, well, this is Gwen. She's active and strong and will definitely give you a run for your money. Mm, I guess really not for me. Uh oh, who's that? <gasps> She's naked! Oh, I came to the right place. You really like the bar? Ah, uh, yeah. Today we're covering the Bells of Steel Bare Naked Power Bar 2.0, which in my opinion is probably the best, if not only budget power bar worth looking at, though we will cover some alternative choices to this bar as well. Now it's not a perfect bar, but in this price range, you do expect some issues, especially versus bars that cost 50% more or twice as much. So in this video, we're gonna cover the good and the bad with this bar. At $200 ship or 300 moose antler shavings or whatever Canadians use for money, this is a solid power lifting bar, meaning it's primarily, pri primarily used for bench, deadlift, and squat. Not that you can't use it for ollie lifts like a power clean. That is if you don't value the skin on your chest with this center neural, and it's really not designed to spin for those types of movements. And the skin on your hands is probably gonna be a little bit more raw than most of us prefer. It's got a 210K tensile strength, a 1500 pound capacity, and a 29 millimeter diameter on the shaft, which is gonna make for a pretty stiff shaft. It weighs 20 kilograms, so 44 pounds, which makes sense since it's made to IPF specs, though it's not IPF approved. It has a limited lifetime warranty, which covers you if there's any defects in the material or the craftsmanship, which is an upgrade from the original warranty, which I believe was limited to five years. Though it is a bare steel bar, so you're gonna have to keep maintaining it or you might void that warranty. The bar has a snap ring end cap design, which is pretty standard now, but not always with some of those better made budget bars. The sleeves and for some reason the collars have this deep set ribbing on them, which can be a bit loud when loading and unloading plates, especially with my Rode deep dish plates. And personally, that's a bit too much grip for me because I really find you don't need that aggressive ribbing this just sounds wrong because with decent collars, your plates really aren't gonna be traveling anywhere anyway. The sleeves used to have some side to side play in them and a spring in there for shock absorption, but they got rid of that somewhere along the way and tightened it all up because now there's really no play in them at all. It has competition style collars, which just means the collars aren't as wide as something that you'd find on like an Ohio bar, a 45 pound Ohio bar, I should say, or an Ohio power bar. And that's going to bring the plates in closer, which can reduce whip some and makes for a stiffer bar. Personally, I like them a little bit thicker, but we probably all knew that because, well, you've seen my training partner, but it's a bit of personal preference there and training style, but something to be aware of. Especially because the other result of bringing those plates in closer, if you've got one of those classic Winnie sloppy walkouts where you bang my plates on everything, well, it could be a bit more of an issue with a bar like this. And if you have a Rogue Monster or a Rogue Monster light rack where it's 49 inches wide, it's something to be aware of. When it comes to shipping and packaging, mine arrived in good shape in one of those classic cardboard tubes, which I've since gotten rid of. But I was so impressed with the bar when it first came that I reached out to Bells to ask if they wanted to do a giveaway, which we will be doing on our Instagram in the near future. So we might as well just open that one up. We'll just do this part sped up to keep it moving along, but what Bells does is pretty typical. You're gonna have a cardboard tube with an end cap, and once you remove those staples and cut around that tape, you should be able to pull the end cap off and get the bar out pretty easily. One of the things that I like that they've done here is they've wrapped foam around certain parts of the bars that could get nicked up during shipping in hopes that your bar arrives undamaged. Being a bare steel bar, it's gonna be coated in oil and shipping, hence this plastic wrap here, and that's so it doesn't develop surface rust on its way to you, but it does mean you're gonna to have to do a little bit of cleanup when you get it. I don't wanna fully unwrap this thing because it's not mine, we're gonna be giving it away, but it looks pretty darn good. The finish is a hardened chrome on the sleeves, which is a good choice because it tends to hold up well over time, and obviously the shaft is a bare steel, which takes some maintenance, but it is the cheapest price point since they're not adding a finish to it. And it's gonna give you the best grip on your shaft, and we all know how important that is. The only problem with going raw with a bar like this is it's gonna take a little more upkeep to keep it from rusting. But if you don't mind getting a little dirty and cleaning up after a good session, you'll get along just fine. But if you're in a space with a lot of moisture or you're not gonna keep up with it, I might look at another option. Now for the moment we've all been waiting for, or at least what I've gotten myself into, how many cat tongues is your shaft? 
As before, the Ohio bar was given a zero cat tongue rating, it's a passive knurling, and the Ohio power bar, a two cat tongue rating. Well, this bar is trying to mimic, I think, the Ohio power bar. The feel is very similar, so it's also a two cat tongue rating, but the consistency and the cleanness of the knurling isn't quite the same quality as an Ohio power bar, so the cat's just not as happy about it. What I mean by consistent is it's trying to be a volcano style knurl, but at this price and with the bar being made in China, the quality just isn't the same. Sometimes the knurling is more pyramid and sometimes it's more volcano. I figured this out after running my hand over the shaft a few times, which I typically do to see how good it feels. But during use, I've never noticed a difference and I did try paying attention to that very thing, so take that for whatever it's worth. It's got power lifting knurling marks and that center knurl is a little bit wider than many other bars, so if you value length in the middle, that might be important to you. It's also one of the reasons I've used this a few times over my Ohio power bar to squat. It holds better with the additional width there. It has brass bushings, at least I'm 89.32% sure they're brass, and yes, I did do the math there, but I'm not a metallurgist. I do wish they did a little bit better job with their listing, but that's not unique to them. Texas Power Bars doesn't include all the information either. Anyway, there's a ton of information out there saying that they're brass or that they're bronze, so I did what I often do and went overboard and disassembled a few bars to do a comparison to see what they're made from. Fun fact, after doing all that, I noticed in the FAQ section of their powerlifting bars, it says that the bushings are made from brass. But I still stand behind my thought that the listing could be a little bit clearer. But maybe I'm just mad because I can't read. Anyway, brass is often seen as a sign of a lower quality bar because it's softer and cheaper than bronze. And also since bronze can self-lubricate. But since this is a powerlifting bar and you're not as worried about spin, and this is clearly a budget bar, if not the best powerlifting bar left at $200, I think we'll be okay. Now I've only had this for a few months, so who knows how I'll feel in a few years, but so far, so good on the bushings. We'll quickly cover some alternatives to this bar, but honestly, there's not a ton of options at or below $200. So I'm gonna cover a little bit below and a little bit above so you can get some idea of what you're looking at in quality for that range. The first bar that makes sense to look at is the Onyx bar, and it's literally just this bar with a Cerakote finish. Cerakote is a great finish because it's durable and thin, so it'll still feel good in your hands, but not as good as a bare shaft would really feel like there should be a condom joke in there or something. Of course, that also means much less maintenance, but at a higher price. At $300, it's still a good bar, but it's putting its price too close to Rogue and other competitors to be the clear winner that the bare naked powerlifting bar is. Not that you can get an Ohio Power Bar with Cerakote finish for $300 shipped. You could also look at a bare steel Ohio Power Bar, which overall is a better bar, but with a cost at over 50% more, it better be, and it's not really a fair comparison. There really aren't a lot of options for a worthwhile powerlifting bar for $200 or below. You could look at the Boss from Cap, but at 132K tensile strength and a 28.5 millimeter shaft diameter, honestly, I'd rather just pay the $12 difference in price or whatever it is for the day and go with the bar from Bells. The only reason I'm listing it here is to show the amount of variation you get in quality and specs at this price. Black phosphate isn't the greatest finish, and if your accomplishment is that you have a finish, and it's listed at a 1,500 pound capacity, but I really debate that number. Now, if it was $150-ish, like the Beast, it might be worth a look, but it's just too close to Bells at the moment. Now, if you could get a Bear Steel Rogue Boneyard Ohio Power Bar for about $230 shipped, that's where I'd seriously debate upgrading. Now, those are blemished bars, and while I've had a lot of luck with Rogue's Boneyard, I do get DMs from people who aren't always so lucky. So if you don't mind cosmetics and maybe a little bit of gambling, it's definitely worth a look. My deadlift bar is from the Boneyard and I'd be hard pressed to tell you what's wrong with it. And one last warning with those bars is there's no warranty and all sales are final. Now, if you're interested in this bar at this price, I don't see how a lot of people could compete. And I really honestly don't see how they can keep this price this low for much longer given our current climate. It's not perfect, but you don't expect it to be at this price range. You're a little more forgiving of the flaws. And if you're looking for a budget powerlifting bar, this should, should <laughs> seriously be on your radar. Like, comment, and subscribe to boost this on that algorithm. Hope this video was helpful. I'll see you next week.